Hi guys. Today we will analyze Stanley Black & Decker stock, and calculate its intrinsic value using two different valuation models. Enjoy. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Technical Analysis The stock is a bad performer in the overall market. The short-term trend is negative. The long-term trend is negative. It is better to avoid buying stocks with negative trends. Support level is around $138. The next strong support levels are around $119 and $104. Resistance levels are around $147 and $151. The next strong resistance levels are around $170 and $180. In the last month the stock has been trading between $137 and $167 range, which is wide. It is currently trading near the lows of this range. The stock has an average volume of 2.5 million. This is a good sign as it is always nice to have a liquid stock. The stock has been in a downward trend since May 2021. Be careful. Intrinsic value. Buy low, sell high. We have heard it many times before. But how to know when it's low, and when it's high? The intrinsic value of a stock, is its true value. It refers to what a stock is actually worth even if some investors think it's worth a lot more than that amount. Intrinsic value is important, because it can help investors understand whether the cost of a stock is undervalued, or overvalued compared to the market value of the stock. Let's calculate the stock's intrinsic value. For more accurate results, we will use two different valuation models to calculate the intrinsic value of the stock. Discounted free cash flow model, using the formula below, then, valuation based on earnings per share, 5-year average P.E. ratio and expected growth rate. First model. Discounted free cash flow valuation. This spreadsheet contains some financial data that we will use for the stock valuation. We see that the average revenue growth rate of the stock has been around 7% per year, for last 5 years. We see that the average profit margin of the stock has been around 8% per year, for last 5 years. Also we see that the average free cash flow to net income rate of the stock, has been around 82% per year, for last 5 years. And we expect 8% per year average stock market return. Now, let's consider 3 different scenarios for Stanley Company, bad, average, and good. First scenario. Stanley will have bad performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. Future revenue growth rate would be low, 5%. Future profit margin would be low, 7%. Future free cash flow to net income rate would be low, 60%. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $74. Second scenario. Stanley will have average performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. Future revenue growth rate would be average, 6%. Future profit margin would be average, 8%. Future free cash flow to net income rate would be average, 70%. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $99. Third scenario. Stanley will have high performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. Future revenue growth rate would be high, 7%. Future profit margin would be high, 9%. Future free cash flow to net income rate would be high, 80%. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $129. Second model. Valuation based on earnings per share. This spreadsheet contains another financial data that we will use for the stock valuation. The current earning per share price for the company is 10.16. Minimum rate of return. I will use 12%. Because when we invest in individual stocks, we are looking for a higher return than the S&P 500. For Stanley, analysts forecast growth rate around 8% per year in next 5 years, and future PE around 12. Again, I will use 3 different scenarios for Stanley Company, bad, average, and good. First scenario. Stanley will have bad performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. Future growth rate would be low, 5%. Future PE would be low. 12. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $68. Second scenario. Stanley will have average performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. 
future growth rate would be average, 6%. Future PE would be average, 15. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $93. Third scenario. Stanley will have high performance in next 5 years, and we will use the following parameters in our calculation. Future growth rate would be high, 7%. Future PE would be high, 18. In this case, the fair value of the stock today would be $121. As you can see, today the stock is overvalued, $140, even if we expect the company's high performance in future. Stanley Black & Decker is a dividend king. The company has raised its dividend for 54 consecutive years. While the company has a medium profitability rating, there are some concerns on its financial health. Also, the stock has been in a downward trend since May 2021, and it can go lower. And the stock looks a bit overpriced. I may consider buying the stock for the dividend when the stock drops to $120 and when it shows signs of reversal. Company Strengths Stanley Black & Decker is an American manufacturer of industrial tools and household hardware, and provider of security products. Its brands are staples at large home improvement and industrial construction retailers. As the crisis eases, the company expects a specific emphasis on enhancing the Craftsman brand, and improving financial strength. With recent acquisitions of MDT and Excel Industries, there is a great opportunity for Stanley to expand its presence in outdoor power equipment, and to extend its expertise in battery technology. The company's return on assets of 11% and return on equity of 27% are amongst the best returns of the industry. Its profit margin of 11% is amongst the best of the industry. The company is a dividend king. The company has paid a dividend for 145 consecutive years, and raised it for 54 consecutive years. The stock has a yearly dividend yield of 2.24% at the moment. Risks COVID-19 has caused economic disruptions pressures from raw materials, packaging fees, supply chain disruptions and higher wages. The Federal Reserve is signaling tighter monetary policy. A big risk is that their actions will lead to higher long-term interest rates, which could raise mortgage rates, and hurt the housing economy. A downturn in home building or a recession could pressure the demand for tools. As the company expands its international presence, currency becomes a bigger risk and a bigger analytical challenge. Any decline in product quality would almost certainly dent consumer loyalty, as customers tend to feel a strong sense of attachment to their tools. The company also has some client risk associated with its relationship with big box retailers including Lowe's and Home Depot. Increasing price transparency on Stanley products will probably push Home Depot and Lowe's to develop private label products, that can be sold at lower price points than Stanley or DeWalt. Stanley faces commodity price risk. In the past, the company has not been able to consistently offset input cost inflation with price increases, so volume growth, operating efficiency, and profitable acquisitions must compensate for the remaining impact. The company is expected to show a small growth in earnings per share. In the coming five years, the EPS will grow by 9% yearly. The revenue is expected to grow only by 6 to 8% on average over the next five years. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.